Back here on this Saturday morning, Steve Cashel, Dr. Brian Cole. It is Sports Medicine Weekly, and time now to get our viewers involved in our Ask the Doctor segment. It's very simple. Go to our website, sportsmedicineweekly.com, where Dr. Cole can address your specific sports injury issues. You can just go to the pay, uh, website, go uh, click on the homepage, and also the link where you see the picture of Dr. Cole and yours truly, and ask the doc a question. Got a couple good ones. You ready, Dr. Cole? A doctor's in, buddy. All right. Well, here's a question from a uh, listener. It says, I'm about to undergo ACL reconstruction. What's the best graft option? So just so for our listeners, the anterior cruciate ligament, that's the most commonly injured uh, knee uh, ligament injury in the knee requiring surgery. And... Um, we have a lot of ways to fix it with a graft, in other words, a replacement for the torn ACL. And you can use donor tissue, a so-called allograft. You can use um, uh, your own tissue called an autograft, which could be your hamstrings, your patella tendon between the kneecap and where the tendon inserts into your shin bone, that bony prominence that you have there. It could be your quadriceps tendon. Uh, so those are sort of the basic categories, and there's a lot of uh, of interesting literature that has emerged. I will tell you that we have uh, have three publications that have uh, interviewed team physicians who take care of the NFL, Major League Soccer, and the NBA, and the vast majority for those athletes choose a patella tendon autograft, meaning coming from the player himself or herself, to fix their ACL tear. But there was recently a really interesting study, Steve, that looked at the risk of repeat knee injury when we when we would use hamstring versus patella tendon. And, uh, and this is something I've always suspected. And again, it's probably related to surgeon experience and so forth. But the the repeat injury rate with the patella tendon graft was 4% compared to 15% with the hamstring. Uh, so... I, I, you know, is it definitive? Could I think what I what I like to tell patients for graft choice is that it's a little bit of an art in making the decision. It has to do with what works well in that surgeon's hands. Hopefully, they are keeping track of how their patients are doing, um, and it's there. And there is some science based upon age, gender, the sport, and so forth. Uh, for me and you, Steve, even though we're pretty active guys, we might use donor ACL because we've got lots of other things going on. Right. We don't have time to be shut down for a couple of weeks, um, and we want to get back at it right away. And we're not likely to re-tear our ACLs again, so an allograft donor tissue could be a wonderful option. Uh, but the flip side is if I have a 24-year-old uh, male, uh, because they are the higher risk of re-injury, uh, they get a patella graft all day long in my practice. And I think now there's very good literature to support that decision-making. Neat stuff. All right. Another question for you. This, I can't wait to hear the answer to this one. Does alcohol consumption, Dr. Cole, affect muscle recovery? This comes from a listener of ours. Uh, this is a great one. I think the first thing to understand is alcohol can lead to dehydration. Okay, so yep. there's a basic physiological principle that alcohol can compromise your training and dehydration can lead to issues of um, of muscle recovery and delayed onset muscle soreness. So um, that's uh, something to be uh, 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 very much aware of. Uh, but there is some recent research that has shown that protein synthesis, the ability to make sort of new muscle, um, even if you take a protein supplement, that alcohol actually actually suppresses uh, our body's ability to regenerate skeletal muscle and can actually impair recovery. Um, so uh, alcohol is not a good thing in that setting. Obviously, we all you know, think maybe you know a little bit of red wine is a good thing, and even that has become uh, in question lately. Is red wine really as good as people say and so forth uh, because of resver- resveratrol, which is an agent, in, an antioxidant agent in red wine. Um, that's even come into question more recently. Um, I think, you know, I, you know, my answer would be that if you are training for something or are trying to uh, optimize your recovery, uh, I think uh, you should stay away from alcohol, period. And it's not because I'm so conservative about these things and so forth, um, you know, everything in moderation. But I think it really does impair your ability to what we know now scientifically to make new muscle could lead to dehydration. And I think can, and it's also unnecessary calories when you're trying to uh, sometimes lean up and sort of turn your body into a furnace, if you will. So uh, I think that based upon your training patterns, you might want to consider eliminating alcohol during various phases of your your training program. 
Hey, Dr. Cole, appreciate that. We are out of time. Many thanks to our producer, board operator, Shane Reardon. Our coordinating producer is Tracy Toro. Also want to thank David Cole for managing our website and our business operations, as well as Samantha Smith from Midwest Orthopedics at Rush. For Dr. Brian Cole, I'm Steve Cashel saying so long, and thanks for listening to Sports Medicine Weekly here on The Score. Up next, early odds with Joe Ostrowski. You're listening to Sports Medicine Weekly, and we'll talk with you again next week. Another edition, brand new edition at 8 a.m., only on 670 The Score.